Considering its quality and size, the compact disc most certainly will become a part of our everyday lives in the future. Producer Tom Tomaszewski has that story. Frank Maioli is a connoisseur of wines and music. His eclectic collection of the latter began when he was five years old. Today, he has six to seven hundred selections, ranging from modern electronic to classical acoustic. But lately, Frank has neglected the LPs he collected for years and turned to compact discs. Frank has purchased 80 discs already, and he's only two months into this new collection. He says the discs sound that good. It's clean. There's no noise. Um, the only detectable noise you would have is possibly tape discs from the original recording. Um, otherwise, you don't have the disturbing uh, surface noise, pops, uh, clicks, um, distortion. Frank's new passion does cause problems. For example, classical compact discs take advantage of the 70 minutes worth of recording time on CDs. He feels cheated when he pays near the same price for rock CDs that are only 45 minutes long. Frank is also having trouble finding the European titles he likes. Often he has to take his second or third choice. Frank was so worried about availability that he began buying compact discs even before he bought his disc player. I saw a title that I'd like and I thought by the time I get a CD player I don't know if that title is still going to be in print so I, so I bought it. We see that growth continuing this year. We see, we see it going to new heights, really, in the fall of 85, and we really don't see any lessening of the demand. Jim Frischi is the general manager of the only CD factory in the United States. This Terre Haute, Indiana plant is a joint venture of CBS and Sony. He admits that learning to make the discs took time. That's a picture of the pits and plateaus a laser reads on the underside of a spinning silver platter. No more needle dragging across grooves in vinyl. This music is computer controlled. That changed things considered basic to engineering quality recordings. They would compress or they would boost uh, uh, selections. It's not necessary to do most of those things or do those kind of things for CD because you can go from, from no content to the burst of a drum or uh, a, the beginning of uh, an opera, whatever and uh, reproduce it on CDs uh, without loss in content. Those pits and plateaus on CDs representing music today could represent text tomorrow, a book maybe, even an entire dictionary. A compact disc computer memory is a technological reality in Japan. Fishy says this plant could produce the software for just such products. You can put on one CD uh, the equivalent of uh, six to eight hundred floppy disk. This recording of the 1812 Overture has become the anthem for CD players. Salesmen boom it out when they want to tout the CD's never-ending bass range. Manufacturers are putting their CD players in bumpy Baja Desert Racers and slinky New York stretch limos to exhibit the player's durability. CD players are expected to hit the million sales mark in just three years. It took TV 11 years and VCRs 6 to hit that mark. CD manufacturers say those numbers are growing because they learned from the VCR maker's mistakes. There is one compact disc standard. A group of manufacturers got together and settled on the standards long before the format was even announced to the public. The CD player won't replace Frank Maioli's turntable, at least for now. He has too many old favorites to play. He knows he won't always have the option, but given a choice, all of his future purchases would be CDs. In the long run, it's going to become a revolution. Um, just pop it in, play it, sit down, and relax, enjoy the music.